Hello, I am back to YouTube after much needed and oh, I'll say a forced break. <laughs> so hello everybody, thank you so much for checking in with me, comments and DMs and even text messages. Um, I'm back. I'm good. Everything has been pretty good. Well, yeah, pretty much everything. We'll get into that. I'll put timestamps down below in case you want to skip through where I've been and what I've been doing and get right to my budget. But before I get into my July budget, I thought I would just like catch up a little bit with you guys, let you know what was going on, what happened to me, and uh, where we're going from here. So the first major thing that took me away from YouTube here was I started an evening position. You guys know I'm on a journey to pay off $150,000 in debt. I've paid over $50,000 of that debt off. I still have a long way to go. And well, I, I need to make as much money as possible. So I took a part-time position scoring state tests. So you know how kids take those standardized tests at the end of the year? There's always questions that are kind of open-ended that they have to actually write an answer for. Well, I was scoring those and I didn't expect it the project to only last two or three weeks, then I would get a break for a week and then maybe do two or three more weeks. But the first project that I was assigned to was six weeks long. Like I was not expecting that, but because I needed the money so badly, I, I went with it. Oh, it was exhausting. So I would get home from teaching all day and you know the end of the year can get very busy. The kids' behaviors start to escalate. Anyway, so I get home somewhere, let's say like 4, 4.30, take care of the dog, the cat, myself, dinner, whatever, and I would have to be signed into the computer by 5.30, work till 9.30, and I was reading almost 400 papers per night. It was exhausting, and I didn't realize how much of a commitment it actually was going to be, but anyway, um, I would do it again. In fact, I did it again. <laughs> I did say that I wasn't going to take on another project, but of course I couldn't, you know, say no. Um, so that started in April. In May, while that project was going on, my colleague and I had planned a very big undertaking of doing a STEM expo at my school, and that was more than what I was also expecting and it was such a great experience. We had a really good time. It went really well, but it did take a lot of my time that I really needed to make sure I put into instead of just, you know, coming here to make videos. So uh, you guys know teaching is my first job and my first priority when it comes to extra work or any work really. So that came first. Also in May, I went to visit my family one week. <laughs> it had been a long time since I had seen them, I think since Christmas, and now it's May. I really haven't had that much time with my newest nephew, so I wanted to take advantage of a weekend to go see him, and I think, was it Mother's? That was Mother's Day weekend, I think. Somewhere in May as well, um, I decided to talk to my PCP about weight loss medication. She put me on one of the medications, and I had a horrible reaction to it after the second dose. I'm talking like full body numbness, pressure in the chest. Now I, I don't know if maybe I just started to feel anxious that caused some panic that caused the chest pressure or what, but um, the one night I was sitting here on my computer scoring tests and it was like, the computer was so blurry. I cleaned my glasses and I'm like, this is hard to read, but it was actually part of my reaction. So I had stopped it immediately, called the doctor, left her a message. She called me the next morning, said, you're done. Um, and I was like, yeah, I did not take the next dose that was due. So uh, the plan was to do that and um, that didn't work out. So. While I waited for my follow-up appointment, then I had started fertility treatment, so that took a lot of time. 
And I had the initial appointment to just follow up on my doctor, initial blood work, um, and then some medication, and then a waiting period, and monitoring, and it was a lot. Uh, I don't know that you guys really are here for that kind of content, but let me just tell you, it has been a lot. <laughs> um, if you do want to know more details, let me know, and I can make a separate video with more details that if you're not interested, you don't have to watch. If you are interested, you can watch it. So anyway, unfortunately, that has not resulted in a pregnancy, and we're just have to discuss what we're going to do next. Um, so then at school ended, I had a week off and then I took on another project of test scoring. So that was the rest of the month of June. And then what else did we do? My husband was, oh, that ended. And then my husband took his vacation. So that was, we didn't, we had a staycation. Then my car needed repairs. Uh, so I took advantage that my husband was home, that he could get me back and forth. And um, that was a fiasco. So lots of stuff going on, you know. <sighs> my husband's back to work from his vacation. So we're back, I say we're, me and Luna. Oh, she's not over there. She's still out there. And Orion, we're back into a summer routine. Here I am with you guys once again. So <laughs> sorry I went away, but thanks for checking in on me. Things have been pretty good. I wish the fertility had gone better, but it is what it is. And um, and now I'm back here to do some budgeting. So oh, I was debating like, where do I start? I really didn't do a good job tracking for the months of May and uh, June. So I thought, where should I start? You know what? Let's just take a look at, um, July. Also, I have this new spreadsheet. I decided to stick with the budget by paycheck method. I like this spreadsheet. It works the best for me. It helps me to see what money's coming in, what money's going out, how much is left over, if I missed anything. It's just it works so much easier for me, so I'm going to show you how it works as we go through my budget for July. The first column here is all the paydays. It looks a little wonky because I had um, some of these rows were hidden and then I couldn't see all the dates. So it looks a little bit weird right now, but don't worry about that right now. In this next few columns, I have my basic budget. And then what I added was right here, a budget for every single month. So I don't have to sit down at the beginning of the month and fill the numbers in. It's already done for the rest of the year. It really helps me to see then when am I going to have the three paycheck month and what's coming up as far as bills. And you'll see as I go through my budget um, how this is going to benefit me. So here at the top, I have it noted that it's my budget. I have the months. So I'm going to go ahead and hide every month except for July. So in July, I'm expecting two paychecks, $1,784 per paycheck. I don't expect any additional stipends in July. I do have some days that I'm working, but I don't think I'll see the, that pay until August. So I'm not really sure what's going to go on. Um, as far as test scoring, test scoring season is over until next season. So there won't be any more income from that. Um, you can see I have my YouTube on here. Um, I've been absent from my YouTube channel for what, two and a half months, maybe two months. So it's going to take some time to build up that momentum again. Um, so really the only thing is going to be from my reselling or if I sell stuff locally on the Facebook marketplace, but I'm not sure what to expect from that because my reselling has changed a lot and I could get into that later. Today we're just taking a look at the budget. I'm expecting $3,568 for the month of July. Over here in the orange, I'm going to send $400 per paycheck to our mortgage account. That goes for mortgage and bills. That's a shared account with my husband and I. We have separate accounts and then one joint account for those uh, kinds of things. 
you guys know I'm a teacher, I pay union dues, however, we only pay union dues for 18 out of 26 pay, and from the last paycheck on June 28th, that was our first paycheck with no union dues, and then the next time will be in, I think the second pay in October is when we start paying again. No union dues. I'm going to leave it as part of my budget over here on the left hand side, but as far as July, I will not have any union dues to pay in July. Life insurance is $13 and change, so I have $14 here. My car insurance is $80 currently, with $79 and change. And then I have my IRA that I'm transferring $583 to. That's withdrawn every single month on the 10th. I think I talked about that in my video that was going to the financial planner. So that $583 per month is going to help me max out my IRA for the entire year. Now I didn't start doing that until May, so I'm going to be four months short. I'll see if I can make that up later in the year um, to max out the $7,500 for this year. Um, we will get into that later. Okay, so my private student loan, you'll see I have a zero payment. Yes, I have paid off my private student loan. I think that was back in May that I did that. So I was gonna do a video and celebrate with everybody or go live, but you know, that just didn't happen. My federal student loan is still $76. They had moved me from one service provider to another service provider. So that's actually in deferment. Talk about that later when it like gets out of deferment. And then my Perkins student loan was $43. If you look over here in another column, you could see $782 and $900. So in June, what does that add up to? $1,682, I think. Anyway, whatever that adds up to is I paid this Perkins loan off in full. I could have submitted more paperwork to say I get the cancellation but I had already done that. It didn't go through. I don't know if they even received the paperwork because it's snail mail. It's not an upload. And I, I just thought, oh, such a hassle. And then I saw that because I didn't consolidate it with my other federal loans, that it, it's holding up other processing. The reason I didn't consolidate it is that was supposed to be forgiven because it was a separate kind of situation. So, um, I, I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to pay it off so it doesn't hold up the other paperwork. The other federal loan I have, it's like $80,000. So I pay this off, now I'm done with it. So we're actually going to change this to zero and we won't be paying that in July. I have a minimum payment of $25. This one, the minimum payment is $65. As you can see, I have budgeted in July huge amounts that aren't happening. I don't know what I'm doing here. One is going to get $800 and the other one's going to get $100 and we're going to talk about that later. More in depth. <laughs> um, down here in the purple is savings. I'm planning to send some money to my buffer account, my emergency fund, my sinking fund, and then funds for my nibblings. This might change. I might not do any of that. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to leave it there for right now. Down here in the gold color, I do have some sinking funds listed out. I did allocate some money to each, well, not each of the sinking funds, but many of those sinking funds. And I'm just not sure I'm going to actually carry that plan out. July is going to be a very busy month. If you have been around um, on this journey with me for like last summer or the past two summers, then you know that the summertime is super spendy for me. Now due to my fertility treatment, I really didn't do anything in June, plus I was test scoring. So June has been all tied up. I really have not done that much spending. I'm trying to keep July that way too, but there is a lot going on in July and August and all summer long. 
all good stuff that I'm looking forward to. So I'm just not sure I want to keep the money the way I have it right here. I'm probably going to change some things around. All right. And then down here, you'll see this pink highlighted. Um, first of all, over here on the left hand side, you can see I should have $3,568 of income. Uh, fixed expenses, $1,589. Well, for the month of July, it will be $1,477 because I'm not going to pay my union dues. Um, going towards debt, I only have budgeted $166. But um, like for my general budget. But for my July budget, I have $976 going towards debt. We'll get into that. Um, savings, I general budget $325, July budget $300, and then variable expenses, I just didn't budget out, which is why I have $1,400 left over. Um, but for the July budget, I did budget $775 with $40 left over. So, like I said, this is probably going to be adjusted. I will do uh, weekly budget check-ins like I had been doing in the past, so we will be updated on that uh, later. This column says payday, so I actually have listed out all of the paydays for the rest of the year. I have all my paychecks entered, all of my fixed in variable expenses no just my fixed expenses debt I did not include savings in that um, so I can see how much money I'm gonna have left over every single paycheck let me just hide these columns quick hide okay and then over here it says actual it has the months so from the payday column, once something clears, I move it over to the actual column for that month. That just helps me keep track of how much I'm spending or making every single month. So that's how I do my monthly budget. For example, once this $538 or $583 from uh, that I budgeted from my June 28th paycheck. Once that clears from my checking account, I will move it over here under the June column. Now we're going to have July starting, so I'm going to go ahead and just hide everything, but there we go. So now July will be set up. This is just going to give me an overview. I have my budgeted column. I have my paydays that will be visible and then what I actually either earn or spend for that month. You'll see how it works as I do my budget checkups throughout the month because <sighs> the crazy is over and I am getting back into the hustle of being here with you guys. So I think that is plenty for today. <laughs> Um, like I said, if you want to know more about my fertility, great. Um, I'm going to share some health stuff with you because I have a health update. Um, we'll go over total debt and my savings challenges and all that kind of stuff is yet to come. So if you found me on a whim and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. I still plan to give away $250 when I hit 2,500 subscribers. I thought I'd be there by now. So help a sister out. It's free for you. Helps me out. And you know, what's better than that? Oh yeah, and I can't wait to tell you guys about my plan for giving. There's so much has been going on. Anyway, I will catch you guys in a few days. I don't know what my schedule is going to be this summer with the videos, but I'll be back in a couple of days with more. So I'll see you then. Bye.